Hey, it's Alan Sepinall from HitFix.com here for another installment of Ask Alan, where I take your questions about the past, present, and future of TV. Uh, Matthew Olson asks, My concerns about restarting shows began years ago when the Homicide movie left me less satisfied and more angry than its initial cancellation. In the reboot resurrection era of TV we seem to be in, what great series do you hope never gets started up again? How about all of them? I mean, I'm recording this on Tuesday. It's the day after the X-Files finale aired. X-Files finale was awful. It was so bad. It was really terrible. On the other hand, we did, I, I should be fair, the X-Files finale revival did give us Mulder and Scully meet the Were Monster, which was fabulous, and which I've said and believe sort of justified the whole revival. So maybe I shouldn't be so absolute. I, I'm going to be watching every second of the Twin Peaks revival, fearing it will be awful. Maybe it will be, but, you know, wanting to see it. But... More often than not, I'm anti-revival. I like new things. Um, I don't want to see someone try to continue The Sopranos or The Wire without David Chase or David Simon. Um, I, shows have their time. Their time comes, their time goes. Move on. At, on the other hand, if someone wants to revive Terriers tomorrow, I'm going to watch that too. So I'm a big fat hypocrite. Um, but for the most part, I think shows that were really sort of perfect and done, I don't ever want to see come back because I don't want, you know, people to mess with them. Related to that, though, Elijah Montoya asks, could you pitch ABC some Lost spinoffs for me? With all these shows getting revivals, I figured my favorite show could come back. I actually bet you that there will be a new version of Lost sometime in the next decade. Uh, it won't involve Damon Lindelof, won't involve Carlton Cuse or J.J. Abrams. It will have new characters and everything else. It will have the same basic idea. And maybe if they get the right person to do it, it'll be interesting. But I think so much of what made that show special, and for some people made it so frustrating, was Damon Lindelof's voice specifically and his ideas. And if you take that away, I'm just not sure what it is other than people trapped on a weird island. But that's going to happen. But, you know, Sawyer and Miles, if they want to do that as a cop show, I would watch two episodes of that and enjoy, you know, Kelly Young and Josh Holloway's chemistry there. If you want to do Desmond and Penny globe trotting and Desmond's consciousness traveling through time, I might enjoy that briefly. I really liked that webisode that they did about what Hurley and Ben were up to after the events of the finale as they were sort of trying to shut things down and going to look for Walt and Michael. Um, and, you know, I would enjoy sort of a little sequel. I don't think that there's enough to carry a whole show, but maybe a periodic check-in on what those two crazy guys are up to and trying to run the island. Uh, I wouldn't object to. Uh, Aman Singh asks, What do you think of Shameless so far this year? How many seasons do you think this show still has left? Um, I'm feeling rather indifferent about Shameless at this point. Uh, on the one hand, Emmy Rossum, always fantastic. Uh, Emma Kinney, um, you know, a lot of the actors on the show, really, really good. It just seems like it's one of those shows that's probably run a little too long, and they're not sure what to do with it right now. The the season they did a couple of years ago, um, where the kids all went up in foster care and Fiona sort of struggling to get them back and Fiona's having her own problem. Like, when, when things got really dark for the show, it got very good for a couple of years. And I, the problem is they couldn't really repeat that. And so they're trying different things and Debbie's pregnant and they're dealing with that. But it's just, it's sort of like what I wrote about girls before the, the, the new girl season debuted. There are certain shows about very specific times in people's lives and specific sort of conditions they're going through, and it gets hard to sustain over a period of time. And I fear Shameless is at that point, and it's still entertaining a lot of the time when they're not doing goofy things like just putting Lip into various porn movie scenarios, like, hey, now he's the houseboy at a sorority house. That's, yeah, that's not a good idea. Um, and it, you can just sort of feel the strain right now, like, oh, what are we going to do with Ian this year? What are we going to do with Carl this year? It used to feel a little more natural than that. The acting is good enough for the most part that I'm going to stick with it, but I, I feel like it has probably passed its peak and is not turning back to that. Uh, finally, Jimbo asks, it seems you've come around, speaking of girls, to the conviction that Marnie in Girls is an intentionally awful character. But are you as certain that Allison Williams has known this all along or even knows it now? Uh, I'm not a mind reader. I can't speak to what former Peter Pan live star Alison Williams did or does know about Marnie, but I feel like watching the show now, and for the last couple of years in particular, it would be impossible to be playing Marnie as this comically awful if she didn't know she was supposed to be this awful. And I don't know if this was always the design or if this was one of those things where Marnie was originally meant to be the normal and sensible friend, and they realized at a certain point, 
oh no, it's just more fun if she's terrible too. Or just based on the fact that, you know, the design of the show in general, I think Marnie was always meant to be terrible, but maybe we were a little fooled at first, both because she came in a more presentable package and because Hannah was such an obvious blatant train wreck from minute one of the series. So she seemed to us to be the more normal one. And at this point in season five, you know, if I had to spend time with one of them, it would be Hannah every day of the week and twice on Sunday. And Hannah drives me friggin' nuts a lot of the time. Um, still enjoying Girls. I think frankly, this season of Girls so far better than the this season of Shameless to get back to that comparison. But, you know, that's a show that I'm glad will be ending next year because at a certain point, the eye rolling at Marnie will roll into the back of my head and never come back. That's it for this time. Until next time, I'm Alan Sepinwall from HitFix.com. See you in the next life, Jack.